We are done. Yay for getting up at 5 a.m. Okay, so before we dive into this meal prep routine, and yes, I do wake up at 5 a.m. on a fairly regular basis to meal prep, we need to rewind to the night before. In order for me to have a successful morning meal prep, I need to make sure that my kitchen is clean. We don't have a dishwasher, so I want to make sure that all my mixing bowls, utensils, mixing spoons, measuring cups, etc. are all clean and ready to use. Once my kitchen is all cleaned up and put in order, I like to write out all the recipes and ingredients that I'm going to prep the next morning. I found that when I'm more prepared the night before and have a game plan for the recipes I'm going to make, my meal prep routines are usually a success. So for this meal prep routine, I am going to make some stuffed dates for dessert, granola for breakfast, some mint brownie bites for healthy snacks, I'm also going to prepare some mango for smoothies, veggies for meals and snacks, a sauce for a quick meal prep, some nut butter because we go through it like crazy, and some jello for a fun dessert for my kids. All right, now that we've talked about how to prepare for a successful meal prep session, let's jump back to the start of my morning. Whenever I'm meal prepping a bunch of things, I always like to start with the items that go in the oven. So here I'm just putting some almonds on a baking sheet to roast in the oven for almond butter. While the almonds were roasting, I moved on to my granola, or if you wanted to make muffins or some other baked good, that is what you should prep next. So here I'm just throwing some rolled oats, nuts, spices, salt into a bowl, whisking it until well combined, before adding in my wet ingredients, including some oil, a sweetener, and usually I add nut butter, but I didn't have any on hand this day. So I'm just stirring everything well to combine before checking on my almonds. So I usually switch up whatever nut butter I make, and I like to stir the nuts halfway through so that they don't burn. Next, I poured my granola mixture onto a baking sheet, spread it out into an even layer, and then when the almonds were done roasting, I was able to put my granola in right afterwards to start baking. Meal prepping efficiently takes time and takes a lot of practice in the kitchen, and once you get a feel for what recipes you like to make, you can be more efficient with your time and oven use and that just helps things to go more smoothly. So while my granola was in the oven, I got out a bunch of veggies that I wanted to prep, some for snacks, some for lunch and dinner prep, just a wide variety of veggies. So here I am peeling and chopping up some carrots just for snacking. I found that I really like prepping whole large carrots and cutting them into sticks. I find they taste better than baby carrots, or at least the baby carrots here in Malaysia. And we like to store them in some water, which I will show you later. Once my snacking carrots were all chopped up and ready to go, I pulled out some bell peppers that I wanted to prep for dinner this night. We were going to have fajitas, so I'm just slicing up my bell peppers into sticks, and then they were all ready to go for dinner this night. A very realistic meal prep involves a lot of stopping and starting one item and checking on another, so here I am stirring my granola halfway through in the middle of chopping up my veggies just to make sure it didn't burn, and then I just popped it back into the oven and got back to chopping. Mm -hmm. 
So another veggie I wanted to prepare were some mushrooms. They seemed like they were about to go bad, so I wanted to get them out of their packaging, and they were also gonna be a part of our fajitas this night. So I washed them off, chopped them up, and ended up placing a paper towel in with the mushrooms just to keep them from getting moldy or slimy. And here I'm adding some water to my chopped up carrots. We love to store them in water in the fridge. It keeps them nice and crisp and refreshing. Whenever possible, I like to clean up as I go when I'm meal prepping, just so that my counters don't get crammed with items or foods. So here I am putting my chopped veggies into the fridge just to keep them fresh. Next up, we're making one of my most exciting recipes in this meal prep, at least for me, because it's something I've never made before, which is vegan jello. So here I'm putting some water, juice, a little bit of sugar, and agar powder, agar powder. I'm not sure how you say it, but I'm combining these all in a saucepan, whisking to combine, bringing the mixture to a boil, and then turning it off the heat before pouring it into a nice glass container that can handle heat. And then I just allowed this to cool before I put it in the fridge to set, and you guys will see later, but it turned into jello and it was delicious. At this point, my granola was done, so I pulled it out of the oven and allowed it to cool. And of course, as you go, you need to check off your items. It's super satisfying, so I was just checking off the items I had already completed before moving on to my sauce for the week. I love to have a sauce made in my fridge ready to whip up quick and easy dinners or to drizzle over Buddha bowls or to use as a dip for veggies. So here I am making a super simple satay sauce or peanut butter sauce and just whisking it until nice and smooth. It takes a little bit of finesse to get this thick mixture nice and combined. And I just add water a little bit at a time until I get a nice pourable consistency. This was so nice to have on hand this week as I made some super simple peanut noodles one time and then we just used it as a sauce for Buddha bowls another night. And you just put a lid on top and store it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. Another item I like to prep on a fairly regular basis is frozen fruit, especially frozen mango for smoothies for my kids. I find fresh mango so much cheaper than frozen mango here, and so I like to buy lots of mango in bulk, wait for it to get super ripe, and then I chop it up. And I'm gonna show you my favorite way to get mango out of the cheek or out of the skin, I guess you could say, and that is by using a cup. So you're just gonna cut the cheeks of the mango off of the pit, and you're gonna slide the mango down the side of a glass and all of the inside will pop right out super simply. And this makes cutting mango so easy and especially if you want to get all of the mango flesh out of the mango skin, it does it really quickly and then you're able to just pop the mango squares into a bag and freeze it for later. Since it was getting close to breakfast time for my kids, I saved some fresh mango for them before pouring the mango squares into a bag to freeze for smoothies for later. And in case you're super observant, no, I didn't waste all that mango on the pit of the mango. I like to cut it all off as best as possible. And then I also chop that up and freeze it as well. So now I can check off a few more items, including the mango and the sauce, before moving on to my mint chip brownie bites. I almost always have some kind of ball or protein ball or granola bar in our fridge for quick and easy grab and go snacks. And this week I decided to make a date sweetened brownie bite. So here I am pitting a bunch of medjool dates and in just a little bit, I'm going to use them to make some brownie bites. But before I do that, I want to start by making my almond butter. So remember those almonds that we roasted first thing in the morning? Well, we are finally ready to use them to make some almond butter. I have been making homemade nut butter for years now and I've found that the almond butter comes together a lot more quickly if I allow the nuts to cool after roasting them. So here you can see the progression of the almonds turning from whole roasted almonds into an almond butter. 
Usually they turn into a meal before turning into a sticky dough, before turning into a big glob of dough that kind of goes around the processor. And then soon enough, the oils come out and almond butter is created. I already had a bunch of homemade peanut butter on hand because I make that every week without fail and so it was nice to switch it up and to have some almond butter to choose throughout the week when we wanted that instead. To store your almond butter you can simply place it in a jar with a lid and store it in the fridge if you won't use it very quickly or for us who devour nut butter so quickly we just keep it at room temperature and eat it in about a week. Now to my already dirty food processor. I added in some walnuts and some cashews, processed that into a fine meal before adding in some cocoa powder and some peppermint essential oil. You could also use some peppermint extract, whatever you feel comfortable with or whatever you have on hand. And then once I have a nice sandy chocolatey meal, I'm gonna add in all those pitted dates that are super sticky and sweet and process that until a nice sticky combined dough forms. And you'll know your dough is ready and that you've used enough dates when you take the dough out and press it between your fingers and it sticks together super well. So once my dough was all made, I just rolled this dough into balls and placed it in a Tupperware container to keep it in the fridge for quick snacks throughout the week. And at this point, my kids were starting to wake up, so all I had time for was to put my cooled granola into a sealable container. Okay guys, I just put my granola in its container and that means I am done. I didn't get to the stuffed dates, but we have chocolate, we're okay for dessert. So I thought I would just show you everything laid out and I feel very good. I have snacks on hand. I have veggies ready for quick lunches and dinners. I've got nut butter to keep us satisfied and jello for a fun treat for my kids. So let me show you everything that I prepped. This always makes me so excited. Some color, some caloric snacks that will keep us going and some dinner prep. So this is super exciting. So as you can see, the jello is nice and set. I've never made jello with agar powder, however you say it, but I'm pretty sure once I cube it, it will stay together and my kids will really enjoy that. Got my granola, I've got my peppers ready for dinner tonight. We're gonna have some fajitas. So that's just nice to have on hand and if we don't use them all, then we can just have raw veggies. Got my frozen mango for smoothies. Got my cocoa balls somewhere back there. Carrots ready for snacking. We love to soak them in water. It just keeps them really hydrated and fresh. Got some homemade almond butter and satay sauce that we can stir over noodles with some veggies. And we are done. Yay for getting up at 5 a.m. Love checking off my last boxes and don't stress about the stuff you don't get to, but we are done. All right, I can't not see what this gel is like. Ah! So fun. Let's see what this is like together, shall we? Let's see if it stays together when we pull it up. Oh my goodness, so fun. Jello! Ooh! 